drawing of a, a piece of molding I want to make. See, it's going to be finished, it's going to be 11 16 thick by 2 and a half wide. Uh, you can see the profile on the molding there. First thing I do is, well, I go on the internet, do a search for the kind of molding I want. This is a piece of chair rail I'm going to be making. Uh, I download it. I use a Corel to uh, blow it up to the right size so it measures exactly two and a half inches. All right, then I take it and I cut out the, the shape, uh, cut it off from the piece of paper. So I have that exact shape on paper. Next what I do, take a plastic, I got a lot of this 1A plastic around. Take the plastic, put a piece of carbon paper over it, put the drawing on top of it, line it up by feel on the bottom, trace over at the bottom with a pen, and I get the shape that I want. Then I go ahead and take it on a little jigsaw, and I cut out the shape. So I got my, my shape that I want on, on a template that I can use. Next, I get my piece of metal. This is a piece of molding. This is a piece of metal that I had cut out that I made some other molding with. And I go, hey, I laid it on that piece on there, and I'll show you it. I can use this. Part of it's ground away already, which is all right. Less grinding for me. Now, the next thing I do, I used to spray it with this uh, layout bluing. But I'm trying this time, I just took a permanent marker and marked it up roughly where it's going to go. And uh, then I'll, I'll show you what I do next. Uh, next I take my plastic cutout and I clamp it on a piece of steel. And there's the shape there. Now what I'm going to do Let's go ahead and take the scribe. What's they're called scratch alls. A tool like that. Now scratch along the line to give me a design. Now you can see on the steel, so you got that scratch line I can make out. Now what I'm gonna do is take it over on the grinder. Now with different grinding wheels, I'm going to grind to that line. Now what it is, I got to grind it back to give the cutting edge. You can see how the cutting edge is. And that isn't critical. I just cut it so it's back. You know, I don't know what kind of angle you could say on there. That's about the angle. Say a 45 or better than a 45. But I just cut that angle back. All right, let me go grind it. All right. All right. The first thing I did. All right. The first thing I did before I started grinding, I got this cutoff wheel mounted on a arbor metal cutoff wheel. Went ahead, and I went in with that, and it cuts a lot faster than a grinding wheel. And I just roughly ground it down, cut it down to the to the line. It'll be less I have to grind off. All right, now I'll start the grinding. There it is. Got a grind off wheel. And where I'm going to start grinding first on this, on the cutter, is I'm going to do. Oh, first thing I'm going to do is I'll do these little half rounds here on both sides of uh, of the corner. What I'll do is I take the grinding wheel that I got on, and I have a, a shaping tool for dressing up the wheel. And I'm going to go ahead and round these two sides roughly to that radius that I want on there. Make it a little. As you can see, as you can see, I rounded off the grinding wheel. I put a radius on there. Nah, it isn't too critical that that is exactly, but it's just rather than straight across, I want a radius on there. So when I grind that, 
inside. And I grind it. So when I grind the inside of this, the grinding wheel is more to the shape of that inside. It'll make it easier to grind rather than if the grinding wheel is just flat. I'm done grinding. This is the grind piece that I've done. Here's the bowling. Let me put it up. Let's show you. It matches. It matches pretty close. For the design dog lawn I want for the chair rail. Now, I'm only going to grind one of these. Now with the bell saw, if you go to the, if you go to a manufacturer the bell they'll grind cutters for you. They'll make you cutters and they make three of them. And one for each head. Because there's three heads in, in there. I've only, in the last 20 years, all the moldings I've made, I've made a couple hundred different moldings, I only grind one cutter. And what it is, I'll show you, and I balanced off the three other heads with some steel, so I kind of try to keep it in balance. But, the way I was told, and, and it's really, if you follow the logic, even if you had three cutters here, those cutters aren't going to be exactly the same. You're not going to be able to set those cutters in exactly the same. So what you're going to end up is, one of those cutters is going to stick out a hair more than another. Or an, a, a, even one cutter will stick out a little bit more than this one. One is, So what's going to happen is, you're really going to end up making that final little mic, uh, cut with one cutter. So that way I just, though we're just making one cutter. Right, this is the cutter. I'll show you how I want it in the machine. Uh, I want to go ahead. I have other little, just like small cutters I use for it. In the back. And uh, I'll show you how that all works. I'll do that tomorrow. I'm, I'm done today. All right. Let me show you what I got so far. Got the cutter clamped in there. These other spacers, like I say, I just sort of, and especially when it's small cutters like this, I just have some counterweight on the other side. All right, now what it is is, let me step back. I clamp two quarter inch boards, uh, clamps in the front, and I got clamps in the back. And I use this guides for the piece in. I put the piece in. And what I did was, I don't know how well you can see this. There it is. I roughly centered it over the center of those boards. This doesn't have to be that accurate. This is just the back relief. All right, what I'm going to do now is start it up, crank, uh, crank up the cutters until engaged. I got to, you say, I got to raise it up around a half inch. And then, uh, I show what it sounds like and looks like when it's running. This is set up with the cutter in there, roughly centered, I might be a little off. This is the finish of the bowling. I just put a coat of paint on it. Daughter-in-law wanted the white paint. You can see the shape of the profile. Just the first coat, I got to put another coat on it. Hi. Right. Uh, show you some of the cutters I got. These are just all different cutters I had made up over the years, and then I. We grind a lot of them if 
I could use the shape again. And uh, there's some pretty big cutters that I've had. You better watch yourself when using a big cutter, though. The last thing I want to show is uh, when I mount this molding up on the wall, how I do it. To mount, uh, put this mold chair rail up on a mold on a, on a wall. <clears throat> a lot of guys that just go and 45 it. Put 45 in a corner. That's how they put it together. Well, a lot of times your walls aren't that square and everything else. And the 45s don't quite match up right. What I like to do is call it a stick in a cope. What that is is, imagine this is the scope, the stick. I actually just mount it right to the end of the wall, cut off square right to the end of the wall. Then, what you do is the piece that's going to butt up against it, you first cut a 45 on it, like you would a 45. Leave this piece long though before you do this. Cut the 45. Then you go ahead and you take a coping saw. This is a small fine bladed coping saw. And what you do on this 45 is you cut right along the edge, right where it shows that 45 the piece with the coping saw. You cut right along, continue along that. Now what it is is you don't cut it square you cut it back. What that means is, all right, here's on, on the one that I did to show you. You cut it right along that line. But you cut it back, so you have some relief in the back. So you don't want to cut it square, you want to cut it so it's back. Then what it is is, when you go ahead and put You just nail that piece right on, and what it is is nail it on. Like because you cut it at that little angle in back, this you have a little leeway. You get a finer cut, a finer joint than if you use the 45. I like to use this joint rather than a 45 putting it together. You get a, a lot nicer joint. All right, that's it. Let me tell you what I did here. To go back over everything again. Went on the internet, find the kind of molding I want. In this case, it was a chair rail. Copied it on uh, my computer. Went ahead and I used this Corel Photo House. I used that a lot to modify and change the size of things. And I took that, copied it, uh, cut out the, the shape of uh, the molding that I wanted. Went ahead and I had a piece of plastic that I went ahead and one eight plastic and I put used uh, carbon paper, put it down, put the design over it, traced it over, put it onto the plastic, used the electric coping saw to, to go ahead and, and cut out the design. Then I went ahead and, and took some high steel, high speed steel flat stock that I have and I marked it up with an indelible ink pen to, to blew it up. Clamped the plastic on it, took a scribe, scratched it so I can see it. Then I went ahead and took it over on. I got a, a, a big cutoff wheel that I got set up on an arbor that I made. And I ground down to the line just to get rid of some excess stock off of there. Then I went ahead and I, I took the grinding wheel and I got a, a surfacing uh, stone. And I rounded the two sides of the grinding wheel. I ground the little small radiuses on the two sides of the cutter. Then I went ahead and I, I rounded the grinding wheel a lot so I can do the center of the cutter. So I ground that cutter out. Uh, the back angle on a cutter, I just grind it sharp. I, I, I couldn't tell you what angle I go to. It's just I cut it back kind of sharp, kind of steep. All right, that's, that's it on grinding the cutter. Then I match the cutter up up to the drawing, make sure it fits, and then that's it. 
Then I took a little piece of uh, stock I had and, and set it up to cut the back relief on the board. Uh, I clamped two quarter inch pieces of plywood down on a table to hold the board in place while I put the cutter in. Now, let's talk about the machine, uh, uh, the machine for uh, a minute. This is a great thing for making, it's, it's a thickness planer is what it was sold at, and for making molding, but I have a, a thickness planer for thickness that I just use. But I found because of the rubber rollers on this and the fixed bottom blade without any rollers, it makes a great machine for making molding. I've made up molding up to 10 inches wide with this thing. You know, I kept my fingers crossed with that. But the advantage with this, with this is, is because there's the fixed table on the back and a cutter comes from the top and you're feeding it with the two guides, you can take all the cuts you want. You don't have to take a real heavy cut where you would with a shaper up against the fence. With this, you could take multiple cuts, eighth of a sixteenth of a time, eighth of an inch, final cut of maybe 30 seconds if we give you the final. Now the other thing I like about this is rather than buying three blades or if you go to the manufacturer they'll grind three blades for you for a cost and never had one ground but you don't need three blades. If you think about it even if you got the three different blades for the three slots in the head you're not going to line them up exactly right. They might be grind fairly close but you're not going to line them up exactly. So what you're going to have is <clears throat> one of those cutters sticking out a little bit farther than the other two cutters. So basically, you're cutting with one blade. You don't need three blades. Now what i got to do, and I, I should have done a little bit closer in here, but is I put the blade in and I put two blades, two pieces of metal in the other two spots, and I, I got a scale where I measure them out. So the two counterweights are the same weight as the cutter I'm putting it in. So that balances the weight out in the head. All right, so I did the first cutter, back, uh, cut the relief, put the second cutter in, same thing. Lined up the boards, uh, cranked it down a lot uh, so I can slide the board in so the rubber wheels wasn't holding it down. Lined it up so it, it eyeballed it so it, it, the cutter was square over the board. Then I went ahead turned the machine on, cranked it up. Actually, I took around six cuts to go from uh, around 13 16 thick down to 11 16 thick. Took a, I just, you know, hey, I got all the time in the world. It's not a big run. I probably could have taken more. Should have balanced it a little bit better. I was a little sloppy on balancing. But the molding still come out real good. Hit it with a little sanding, and it looks good. This is a nice way to make molding. You don't have to use a bell saw. If, if you have a thickness planer that has rubber wheels up on top and on the bottom, and you can use the blades. Some, some of these have slotted blades that are clamp in funny. I was looking at these thickness planers. Uh, you got to have, what, like I say, what you can do. I took all of those spacers out originally and I cut them down to different, so I can use different size blanks. I took the 12-inch the aluminum in there, clamps in there, took this, and I cut them down. Plus, I had to cut them because at times I use this steel was 1 8 At times I used 3 16 steel, depending on what I have. All right, that's it. Wish you luck with this.